the Lord appointed seventy-two others and sent them out ahead of him in pairs to all the towns and places that he himself was to visit. He said to them, The harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. Start off now. But remember, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no haversack, no sandals. Salute no one on the road. Whatever house you go into, let your first words be peace to this house. If a man of peace lives there, your peace will go and rest on him. If not, it will come back to you. Stay in the same house, taking what food and drink they have to offer, for the labourer deserves his wages. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you go into a town where they make you welcome, eat what is set before you. Cure those in it who are sick and say, The kingdom of God is very near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not make you welcome, go out into its streets and say, We wipe off the very dust of your town that clings to our feet and leave it with you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is very near. I tell you, that on that day it will not go as hard with Sodom as with that town. The seventy-two came back rejoicing. Lord, they said, even the devils submit to us when we use your name. He said to them, I watch Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Yes, I have given you power to tread underfoot serpents and scorpions and the whole strength of the enemy. Nothing shall ever hurt you. Yet do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Rejoice rather that your names are written in heaven. I've struggled with that gospel all week, trying to think what that gospel is trying to say. To me, at least. And I, I, I did struggle, not because there isn't any clear point to it. There is. There's a many. There's so much in that gospel, it's rich. But trying to decide what is the main point, the, the, the kind of principal message that that gospel is trying to put across, that was the, that was the hard part. That's what I struggled with. There's so much in it. There's the sending out of the 72. And so much associated with their mission, their ministry. That they were to go out in pairs. That they were being sent out like lambs among wolves. That they were to take Nothing with them for the journey. No shoes, no haversack, no purses. All of which perhaps has something to say about our mission, our responsibility, our, our place as part of Christ's church. One of the first things that, that struck me was the way in which the nearness of the kingdom is spoken about. To some, it's used almost as a promise, a reward for the welcome that they extend to Christ, at least to Christ through his disciples. But to others, those who reject the, re the disciples who refuse to receive them, to welcome them, then the nearness of the kingdom is used almost as a threat. Beware, the kingdom is almost upon you. But Jesus didn't send his disciples out to make promises or threats. He sent them out to offer peace and to bring healing. And that, I think, is where I've got to with that gospel. It's a gospel not so much about the people to whom the disciples are sent, but the disciples themselves. It's about their mission, not how their mission is received. In fact, 
being overly concerned about how they are received by others is a distraction. They are to remain faithful to the task that Christ has entrusted to them, whether or not people receive it well. I think that's what the, the message of the gospel really is for me. It's about commitment to discipleship, irrespective of how others perceive that discipleship. And what is it that Jesus sends his disciples out to do? To offer peace and to bring healing. It's as simple as that. Maybe ministry, maybe mission is still as simple as that. And we get distracted by how people receive it and doctrines and denominations and rituals. But maybe at the heart of our mission is still that call, that sending out to bring peace and healing into the lives of those who will accept it. But how are we to do that? That's as far as I've got. How are we to do that? The gospel doesn't really give us any answers, at least this passage doesn't give us any answers. It just presents us with the challenge and leads us to work out the answer for ourselves. And maybe that's how it has to be because each one of us is different. Each one of us finds ourselves in different situations, unique situations. We need to work out for ourselves what it means in each to try and establish Christ's peace, to bring peace, to remove the obstacles of peace and to bring healing into the lives of those to whom we are sent.